How Chinese Words Transform When They Enter Mongolic Languages When languages come into contact, they often borrow words from each other. But what happens if the donor-recipient language pairs are similar but set in different sociolinguistic contexts? Do they develop the same strategies? Or do they find their own unique paths? Dr. Julie Lefort of Ka Foscari University of Venice examines how Chinese adjectives are integrated into two Mongolic languages spoken in China, the Dorbet Mongolian Community Language, or DMCL for short, spoken in Heilongjiang, and the Dongsheng language, spoken in Gansu. Despite facing similar bilingual environments with Chinese, these languages have developed different approaches to incorporating Chinese loanwords. Dr. Lafour analyzed published data from fieldwork on the DMCL and Dongsheng, as well as stories compiled for Dongsheng bilingual education. This comparative approach allowed her to examine how each language handles the same linguistic challenge, integrating Chinese adjectives within their Mongolic syntactic frame. Both languages frequently borrow Chinese adjectives, together with the small grammatical particle that is used, among other things, to link adjectives to nouns in Chinese. However, their strategies diverge significantly from there. The DMCL, in contact with Northeastern Mandarin, shows remarkable uniformity in its approach. Every borrowed Chinese adjective must end with the suffix di, a localized form of this Chinese linking particle. Even adjectives that wouldn't normally need this linking word in Chinese must take on the di suffix in the DMCL. Dongsheng demonstrates much greater flexibility in complexity. It uses three different strategies. The first is borrowing adjectives in their bare form. The second involves attaching the suffix ji, borrowed from the local variety of Chinese called ling sha. The third approach uses ni, which copies the grammatical functions of the Chinese particle by using a dongsheng marker. The borrowing of ji has enriched the set of suffixes found in the dongsheng language, while the use of ni in this manner has enriched the functions associated with this marker. Dr. Lafour reveals that while DMCL and Dongsheng have undergone similar exposure to Chinese, they have responded differently. DMCL has developed a stable, uniform system, where Chinese borrowings form a distinct subclass of adjectives. Dongsheng, by contrast, shows ongoing grammatical change and even borrows other Chinese grammatical particles used with adjectives that can attach to both borrowed and native stems. The different patterns relate to the distinctive sociolinguistic contexts of each community. DMCL speakers maintain strong connections to traditional Mongolian as a reference point, while many Dongsheng speakers identify as Hui Muslims who speak Lingxia Chinese and show greater willingness to adopt Chinese structural patterns due to shared cultural and religious grounds. Dr. Lafour's study demonstrates that even when facing similar contact situations, languages can develop remarkably different solutions to the same grammatical challenges.